Architect Reza Ali Dada graduated with distinction in 1995 from National College of Arts, Lahore. He is partner at Nayar Ali Dada and Associates. He conducted his research on the subject of continuity within a changing context, a study through design of historic NCA campus expansion planned to understand the role of history and tradition in forward-looking initiatives. He acquired his master's degree in architecture design from Pratt Institute, New York. His major area of studies was to explore design response to a world of information and new learning tools and interfaces through intervention into spaces for early childhood education. He's affiliated with IAP, PCATP, PIID. He's also a LEED certified architect for sustainable and eco-friendly solutions. Architect Reza Ali Dada is a visiting faculty at School of Architecture and School of Visual Arts, Beacon House National University, and has a long list of architectural and interior projects of various categories to his credit including commercial, institutional, hospitality, residential, educational, as well as interior design. Now I'd like to call, call Raza Ali Dada on stage. Thank you. Salaam uh, ji. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, thank you for uh, letting me be here and be, and be a part of this uh, IAPEX 2012 Karachi. Um, so un under the sort of building bridges context, um, we, we decided that uh, we'll be showing one project here, which is uh, an initiative um, uh, taken with an NGO that calls itself Resettling the Indus, or RTI more commonly. And this was work that we had done uh, primarily um, right after the floods, um, uh, when the flood relief work was in full swing. Uh, what's interesting about this project um, is that many relief projects have happened and, and they keep happening. Uh, but this was an initiative of two very young architects. Um, to name them, uh, that would be Heather Ibrahim and Hala Bashir. And Heather works at uh, our office. Uh, and it, it sort of connected a very young generation to an older one. And at another level, uh, an urban generation to a rural, rural one. Um, and um, uh, we helped the two uh, spearhead this project. And I presented this project in Islamabad as well, which is why I was requested to uh, make sure I bring it to Karachi. Um, so what, before I start with the slides, uh, excuse me while I figure out how to do this. Um, so th th this is sort of under the pretext of how I think um, the roles of architects um, have to be understood carefully in this part of the world and in, in a world where uh, you know disasters are rather common now, uh, not just natural ones, but I think we have um, worse disasters which are um, created by ourselves. And uh, therefore the architect has to be a a more socially responsible architect as compared to the previous years. Um, and, and, and this is something that I think we are going to see more often. And it, I think we should be a little more prepared for that as well. And this project, I think, um, is it, a good um, demonstration of how these people went about it. Uh, so they call themselves Resettling the Indus. And um, it, 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 these are a bunch of volunteers students and a few professionals only. Uh, and they took this initiative and, and went into the area of, uh, of District Muzaffargarh, and where they went and, and carried out a, a whole bunch of surveys and tried to understand how um, that place can be recreated with, uh, through self-help basis. It was important that those people had to be convinced that they can do it themselves. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, this one image or a lot of work that was, has been done in Yemen proved to be the most um, effective um, reference to, to sort of convince them to work in mud again. Uh, the, the local references did not work. Uh, they were not convincing enough. Uh, but somehow uh, uh, this image did something to them and therefore this image was included in this uh, presentation. Um, to rebuild and resettle, uh, it was important to know who, who those people were. 
so there were a lot of surveys, there were, uh, there were a lot of observations, and there were a lot of consultations. And, um, and uh, the idea was to just make sure that their life continues the way it used to, except that it should be more organized and um, more scientifically planned than before. Um, so um, here's a very basic sketch of a, of a basic unit that uh, our team designed along with the villagers in, in Muzaffargarh. This was a basti called Basti Kurai. Uh, and um, they started thinking about where they should build again and how they should build and what kind of functions they would require. And it's very interesting that during all this time, there was, uh, it was uh, education uh, for um, the urban architects because they had to learn the ways of the villagers. And it was education for the villagers because they had to learn how to read drawings and how these architects work. And, and both have kind of educated themselves by now. Um, uh, so uh, once they were convinced that this thing is going to be done in brick, uh, mud brick, um, a, a small uh, portable um, hand-pressed brick unit uh, was uh, uh, formed and we call it Bhatta Junior. And, um, a, a team from the village was then trained how to make these bricks. And then that one team in the village conducted further workshops to, to have more masons uh, who were aware of how to do this kind of work. And, and as you can see, this is, this is the basic material that these guys um, were using. And this is a different kind of prep work that's happening. And the, these images will look like pretty much what those houses used to be like. So what's, what's different from before? Um, infrastructure, uh, they now have um, a sewage treatment unit. That's I think thanks to the team that worked with Khudaki Basti as well. Um, and they have lighter roofs, they have better walls, uh, and they have combined in some instances uh, burnt brick with uh, regular mud brick that is only sunburned, um, dried in the sun. And this, and this is completely local labor. The, the owners of the houses uh, did this work themselves along with their relatives. And usually about four to ten people can put up a house in roughly 20 days or less. So you can see that these, these places are still, I mean, visually nothing, nothing surprising for people like us because once we go out there, this kind of a visual language is quite normal and expected. But what's interesting is that the people who've been building these houses this time around didn't, had, had never done this before. So what that means is that there has been a great deal of community participation. And, and what that did was that it was easy to convince, um, uh, let's say, a village or a small settlement that they need to add other programs to the settlement. And what that means is that r other than the regular typical houses they had, we could convince them to make more schools, dispensaries, hospitals, or have proper mosques, which they never had, uh, and some areas uh, are fairly religious. Uh, here's an example where you see that the outer um, circulation areas are done in burnt brick because they take most of the weather and they are a public building so nobody really tends to them as much as a, a homeowner would tend to. Uh, again, another detail of the same. Um, they used uh, tiles that were um, available in the area. Every, everything that is used to, to put this up comes from a very, very tight circle within the village. Here's again a combination of burnt brick and an and infill with a um, unburnt brick, if you want to call it. And here's a new architect, a homegrown architect, and that's the mosque she wanted to build. So a lot of people did drawings like these for their houses and color schemes and things like that. So all of these people were never involved, we, are, we learned, in, in, in building their houses before. Um, these are some of the finished um, buildings that you see, uh, along with some of the sketches that were done 
by, um, if we can call them urban architects. You can see uh, the roofs have gotten much lighter. There's a lot of bamboo and straw. Uh, this is one of the community buildings. This is like a school. And uh, this is somebody's house, though. This, uh, I'm sorry, I think I've messed up my um, order of slides. Here, here's a school that was built recently. And, and this school, uh, again, um, the age group that was involved in building this school um, was right down to the students of the school. So it, it's, it's really um, a result of participation from all sort of age groups. And what this is doing now is that this was one uh, basti called Basti Kurai. And it started from there. And this is South Punjab region mostly. And what this has done now is that there's almost uh, 35 villages that are working on this model now, uh, working with the same um, materials, working with the same Bata Junior. And uh, the training is coming from the same core group that did the first Basti. And so this is expanding really, really uh, quickly. Um, in fact, uh, it's now moving into some areas of Sindh. Uh, I, I believe some people have approached the team um, somewhere north of Mirpur. And uh, the, the latest um, communication has been with uh, Waziristan. Now, that's a different kind of disaster. But they need this kind of help. And uh, they want to explore this kind of training that they can get and build their own houses this way. Um, I, should, I should mention that this entire initiative uh, was done with completely private funding through friends and families and, and, and very, very small outfits. There's no corporate funding. There's no government funding. Uh, there are no resources that are available uh, for these people other than just these few students uh, and mud that they find uh, in, the, in, the, in their own land. And, and bamboos and, and just, just a few other materials. And, and what this has done now is that they, it has given them a great deal of confidence, after which um, they now have more schools, more dispensaries. Uh, they even have uh, started putting up craft workshops after this because a lot of people are getting into the habit of working with their hands and, and dealing with buildings and details of buildings and decorations and, and, and whatsoever. Um, so the, this... Um, uh, I, I feel is a role uh, that um, some of us will be playing uh, in the near future that, uh, that maybe we hadn't accounted for before, uh, which is why uh, I thought this was uh, sort of relevant in, in, under this context. Um, then there is another bridge which, is, which goes to the future. And this is something I, I spoke about very briefly in Islamabad. And, and uh, interestingly enough, a lot of people talked about it after that, um, uh, whenever I met them. And Shahab Saab here uh, had, had a brief chat with me a little while before, um, which is um, that we, we are a lot of architects, we are a lot of designers, and we, we all have aspirations and hopes, and we, we try to do a lot of good work, at least we think we do. Um, but. Uh, we, we have to be really aware of the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is uh, where are we working and what is the environment that we are adding to and what kind of contribution is it? And is it substantial contribution or not? Um, and, and, and for that bigger picture, we need to zoom out a little bit. And we need to really understand what's happening uh, in terms of developments, in terms of cities, uh, and in terms of issues such as sustainable issues um, all, all over the world at this time. <clears throat> so let, for example, let's take our cities. Now, the, the, the thing about these cities is that they are um, very complex organisms, except that they now grow much faster than they used to. They now house way more people than we thought they will. So, and then the way they take shape, and then the way they shape us later on, um, is, it, is something that we don't seem to have much of a handle on anymore. Um, 
it's just another infographics in the world of information and graphics today. But yes, there is a serious, serious issue of sustainability that all of us have to really um, think hard about. Uh, I really liked this statement. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense, but nobody's going to kill themselves. <clears throat> but what's happening is that I think a lot of people feel this plight, uh, but I am not sure if a lot of us can or are doing something about it. Um, but some are, and, and in the context of Lahore, uh, as, as a Lahore-specific example, um, I would like to say that uh, I've, I've, I feel that things are not as bad as they seem, and at least the ending has not been written yet. Uh, and we've seen in recent uh, events uh, through many um, uh, organizations uh, such as um, we have activist groups in Lahore that have been working towards what they call saving Lahore from development that comes from basically a lot of haphazard planning and comes from planning that has not been talked about, has not been shared, has not been reviewed. Um, and uh, of course a lot of it is politically generated. But what, what has happened is that these groups uh, have started looking at the city on their own, have started making studies on their own. Um, this was a voluntary study done by a group that calls itself OCO and they do a lot of um, urban uh, sort of mapping, urban surveys. Um, and um, this, this is another land use survey uh, that they had done and, and, and there's no need for any details. It, it, the point I'm trying to make is that there are people who, are, who, are, who have started looking at the city because nobody seems to be looking at the city in an organized manner, which I think is the point that I'm trying to make here because it's very, very important that all stakeholders, especially ones that are, that are so closely related such as architects or urban planners, um, need to be actively um, on this subject right now. Um, somebody even went as far as making a city bus map. Uh, I don't know of any city bus map in Lahore, um, but somebody did this. They were inspired by the New York maps and they took a lot of pain and made this. Um, why? Because they are really concerned. And, and just the fact that people are so concerned that they're doing this means that things are really not good. Now, here's another example. Um, there was a canal road widening project uh, that went all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, and for the first time, uh, such an initiative and such activism um, went to this scale and actually got a verdict. Something actually happened. I don't want to sound like people who say, let the five years of democracy go by, but you know, process is necessary and a process did take place. Um, and uh, so they, 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 declared, they declared the canal the urban heritage park and a public trust. Uh, and if you read the last line, the cleaning of toxic water of the canal because de declaring it a penal offense. Something I don't have in my slides is that um, they have formed what they call green benches. So they have um, um, judges who are now going to closely look at environmental issues. And I thought that it was going to be another eyewash, but uh, on the plane today, the, the front page story is that there is a case that's already up about um, toxic stuff being thrown into the river Ravi. So these, these, are, these are changes which were, we were not seeing before. And these are very real. They are happening right now. And this is really a time where all parties need to find out how we can sit together, um, how, how we can bring the government agencies, how we can bring the professional bodies, how we can get the professionals, educational institutions, how can we actually figure out a way that we can consistently, regularly sit somewhere, review these issues, um, and, and find logical solutions that, that we think we need. Only then this bridge will be made. And I think this is the bridge that takes us to the future that I think the coming generation needs to see. And I think the two
students, uh, students who are here, the future students. Um, I was a student at one point, and um, well, I think we are always students all our lives, but when we were in school, we never saw something like this happening. But when you travel to other parts of the world, this happens every day. Uh, and I think um, we, we've seen a very um, interesting, scary side coming towards us very, very quickly. So I, I think we need to um, not have uh, some chaotic process write the ending for us. I think it's not time for an ending. I think it's time for, for some other chapters that need to be more pleasant. And they can only be written if we can all somehow um, figure out how we can get all these components together. And th th that's, that's my uh, sort of, I'm urging all of our office peers of very important organizations here to um, please think about this and whatever all of us can do and all professionals can do, we'd be more than happy to do it before anything else. Thank you very much. Thank you.